Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we are talking about variable valve timing, how we disable it, how we make adjustments to it, why we would want to do all of that stuff. But first let's do the intro and as always, since we are doing tuning, the disclaimer. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Okay, now that that's out of the way, what is variable valve tuning? Well, it is a system that allows you to advance the camshaft up to a certain amount of degrees. It uses oil pressure in a solenoid and is kind of this, it, it's a different than the standard sprocket that's mounted to the front of the camshaft where it will go, I, you know, I think it's 30 degrees or so. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but the, the main purpose behind it is, is that when you have a camshaft, it has an operational range in which it is the most efficient. Generally, it is in the power range. So especially if you're buying an aftermarket cam, they may ask you, where do you want this, you know, the power range of this cam? And you'd be like, oh, you know, I want it to make the most power between three and 6,000 RPMs or something like that. So that is just the base cam. But whenever we are talking about modern vehicles that have these variable cams, that cam can adjust the timing for the lower RPMs in particular to be more efficient down in those ranges. So why would we want to disable this or even simplify it? Like I still have the factory cam in the truck and the Super Auto, but I have taken most of the variations out of it. So a little bit of advance on a cam is not always a bad idea. In fact, whenever you spec out a cam, there's generally one or two degrees of advance built into the cam. So a lot of cams run at like two degrees plus advanced. And if you look at, uh, I've got a LT4 Corvette file open up right now, you can see that the intake camshaft in, intake minimum advance is two degrees on it. So that being said, if you want to simplify your tuning process where we're not having to deal with all of this variation. Look at this stuff. It's below 3000. As I'd said, the cam is really making its power above 3000 already. This, this middle area down here, this is probably, uh, you know, fuel economy, things like that. We're not concerned about it. If you're tuning your vehicle for fuel economy, leave this in place. But if you're tuning for power, we want to get rid of this. This is, you know, a problematic area. So what you want to do is come in here and basically extend these tables out and make them simple. So we're going to add a zero in on this one, make it zero across there. And I'm going to advance this one to a six to make it kind of uniform and simple. You can see the rest of it's already kind of set up that way. And here's the power band on this cam specifically for this Corvette. It looks like it's in the uh, 4,000 to 5,000 range as designed. So what happens is this takes out all this other variation. You're not dealing with a bunch of camming or cam timing events whenever you're tuning. It simplifies everything and you're still going to be making the most power where you need to make the most power. Okay, so if you are changing your cam out and going to a performance cam, there's a couple things that you need to do or a couple options that you have. One of them is to run a cam phase reduction. Uh, kit and it's basically a block that goes in your phaseable cam that's on that comes from the factory setup that limits how many degrees that cam can time. And so generally if you can do 30 degrees stock, this thing's going to limit you down to say 10 degrees. And the reason behind that is is the aftermarket cams have uh, wider lobes, taller lobes, and so your duration is going to be higher, your lift is going to be higher and stuff like that. And that would actually cause interference, which means that your pistons could hit your uh, valves if you were to advance that cam. That's a bad thing, obviously. And so the other option, instead of putting the phase limiter in, is actually to use something like an LS3 cam sprocket, which has no uh, phasing in it whatsoever. It is locked, you time it, uh, you know, you adjust it whenever you install it to get however many degrees of timing you want on the cam, and then there's no after, you know, there's no ECU adjustments on there. The whole oil system doesn't affect all that. So, that being said, if you were to go through that process and put a limiter or a uh, a locked cam gear in there, or you know, a non phaseable cam gear sprocket in there, you need to go into your VVT settings and disable it. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. The big thing that we want to look at is the method 
that your system is using. Uh, all of them that I've seen use Barrow, uh, which means basically they're using the low, medium, and high desired angle tables. We don't have to worry about the exhaust cam shaft on the V8s because the, the small block Chevy is just a single cam. So if you actually go in and look at these, they're all gonna be zero because whenever you set the intake side of the camshaft, you are setting the exhaust side of the camshaft also. So we can come in here, zero out these tables, that's the first step of saying, hey, we're not going to ever uh, request any kind of cam phasing. And then the low one's probably, no, I guess the low one isn't zeroed out. Do, 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 do. Zero all these out just like so. And then we can go into things like the enable condition. So if there's a low oil temp enable down here that says above this oil temperature, the camshaft, variable camshaft will be enabled. Well, let's put that to 493 degrees. So, you know, if you hit 493 degrees on uh, your oil temperature, you've got bigger issues than phasing your cam. Uh, and then the same ordeal below this oil temperature, variable cam shaft will be disabled. So we'll put 492 degrees on there. And then we can do the same with this stuff. Let's go ahead and kill all of this crap, get it out of there, and this will disable our VVT on our setup. See, this one's the opposite side. Below this oil temp, variable camshaft will be enabled. So, you know, we can make that a negative since we'll never be below it. And above this, oil temperature, variable camshaft will be disabled. So we can make that a negative because we're always going to be above it. And then we've got low RPM enabled disables. Based on this, we probably are not using those, but we can still go ahead and, you know, Max these out or zero them out based on which ones they are. So this one says above the RPM, the camshaft will be enabled. So let's put this up to uh, 8,000 RPMs. And then below this, the camshaft will be disabled. So we can put this one up to, I like to always offset these by one at least. So 79.99, same ordeal. Below this RPM, uh, the camshaft will be enabled, so let's set this to zero. And then high RPM disabled. Above this RPM, camshaft will be disabled once again. Let's set it to one across the board. And then last but not least, oil pressure enabled. If oil pressure above this value, variable camshaft will be enabled. So this is in KPA. Set to 4,000. And if oil pressure below this value, camshaft will be disabled. So we'll set that to 3,099. 3,999. And there you have it. VDT should now be disabled. You, sh there is a, uh, you should be able to log a PID through the scanner to see uh, your VVT timing. Let me open one up here. We'll take a look at it. Okay, so if we go in here and add our intake cam desired angle, that should match up with our table. If we have this disabled, that should basically be zero. If you have simplified it and put a two in there across the board, it should show you a two. But you can put the intake cam desired angle into your scanner to make sure that the changes that you've made work. So that basically sums up everything on how to either disable VVT or simplify VVT. Uh, you know, it's 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 one of those it's much like displacement on demand you know it is there for emissions it's not really a performance thing variable valve timing has been used in performance applications in the past but on the small box chevys in this situation it is something else that tries to maximize the emissions of your vehicle so it's not necessarily helping you you're just better off kind of getting it out of the way for your tuning process uh, I can double check. I'm not sure. I know, as I said, the LS3s weren't generally using VVT, but let me open up a, uh, let's see what I got, 2008. So there is variable camshaft showing up on the 2008 Corvette. So this late Gen 4 crosses over into Generation 5. Uh, so it's going to be the same on both platforms though. Some of the menu items might be a little bit different, uh, but from here it looks like about everything's the same. So that's it for VVT. Uh, if you have any questions, hit up the comments below. If you have any comments, uh, hit up the comments below, right? 
And uh, throw a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. There's going to be some more torque management stuff coming out. There's going to be more Project Super Auto stuff coming out. We're going to tear down the dead turbo that lasted all three miles and see if my, uh, my thoughts are correct on what killed it. And then uh, let me think, what else? Uh, oh, yeah, hit up the Patreon uh, webpage, you know, for the Goat Rope Garage. Appreciate everybody who's already supporting. If you're looking for behind-the-scenes stuff, if you're looking for tuning assistance, it's all through the Patreon. And uh, as always, thanks for stopping by the garage.